What's going on, people? This is Lecrae. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Kel Mitchell. Vicky Wine is that would be me. <laughs> Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brian Hooks. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Dr. Dorinda Clark Cole. Yo, what up, y'all? It's your boy, Kev, on stage. Yo, what's up? This is Doug E. Fresh. <laughs> what up, what up? It's DJ Emmy for that Breakfast Club. What's up, everybody? It's Mr. Talkbox. Hello there. This is Kim Burrell. Yo, what's up, everybody? This is Cardi Cortez. Well, hello there. I am Ja'Kalen Carr. Good afternoon. It's Jess with the mess. Hey, everyone. This is Faith Jesse. My name is Kid from Kid and Play. Peace to the planet. Charlemagne the God here. What's up, y'all? Las Vegas. It's Said Entertainer. I want you to download and tune into the greatest gospel station in the Las Vegas area. It's the number one gospel station. Number one gospel station. Number one gospel radio. Check it out. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to go download Anointed Radio app. From either the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. For 24-7 gospel. Make sure to check out their website at anointedradionetwork.com. Music for the soul, music for your spirit, music to lift your heart. That soul food for your body, that energy for your spirit. Gospel in the morning, gospel for lunch, gospel at dinner, and then you go to sleep. You know what? Guess what? You dreaming about some gospel. Sometimes these are the songs that really uplift us and uh, get us through some of the tough times. Salute Pastor J. Calhoun and Anointed Radio. Know your boy wouldn't steer you around. Go listen right now. You feel me? Check them out without no doubt because gospel is what it's all about. Hey, 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 everybody. This is Pastor Jay. We're going to start off in normal fashion. And normal fashion is this. We're going to come out of James 1 and 5. And it says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. If you don't know something, just ask God. He will provide you the answer. He will show you the way. He will give you the, the clarity that you're looking for. But sometimes we put it in our own hands. And then we have the nerve to try to blame God. You can't blame God because you didn't ask God for more wisdom. You didn't ask God for more understanding. You didn't ask God in that moment. You just took off a little bit of what you thought you knew in the revelation that he gave you. And you ran with it, but you didn't wait on him to be able to give you the full picture, the full plan. So I just challenge you today, start asking God to be able to show you the clarity. Start asking God to be able to help you in your plans. Ask God about just the things that you need to work on. Daily self-care is to be able to work on becoming a better you. So ask God, what can I work on? He'll show you if you need patience, he'll put you in patient situations. If you're an angry person, he's going to put you in situations that are going to typically make you angry and see if you really learned what you've been taught every Sunday at church to be slow to anger. <clears throat> but sin not. I'm just saying. But remember, ask God and he will always give you the answer you're looking for. Amen. Yeah, Father God, we just thank you, God, for today. We thank you, God, for being able to bring us here um, to be able to have another day, to be able to glorify your name. Thank you for being the Alpha and the Omega, the protector, the person that puts a hedge around us of protection on a daily basis, giving us new grace and mercy. God, we just thank you and we glorify you on everything that you do, God. God, we just ask you right now to be able to touch everybody tonight that is watching, that is on the show tonight, that they could be able to take something from tonight's interview where they could be able to see new revelation, to be able to see more clarity, more understanding. God, let us be able to reach the unreachable, teach the unteachable, and even touch somebody with the hardest heart, Lord. That is our sincere prayer that somebody can say, what can I do 
to be saved. God, enlarge the territory of anointed radio, God, right now in the mighty name of Jesus to expand to more nations, more airwaves, to, to more to more people. Let somebody tell their mama and them. Let somebody be able to spread the word about anointed radio so that they could be able to say, when I listen to anointed radio, they show a great representation of you, God. So God, we just ask that. God, we ask you to bless everybody on the sound of my voice that's listening now or on the podcast, on the playback, that they could be able able to truly see you for who you are, to truly feel your love, to truly start seeing the evidence in their life of who you are and what you're doing in their life. And God, we just thank you for everything that you're doing. God, we thank you for all the breakthroughs that are coming, all the chains that's going to be broken, all the shackles that's going to fall off people's feet because you're going to show up in a major way. We made it past COVID. We're in a post-COVID world and you're still in the blessing business. You're still in the healing business. You're still in the business of being able to uplift the saints. So God, I just thank you for being who you are. I thank you for always loving me when I even when I didn't even love myself. And God, I just thank you. I glorify you. I give you all the glory and all the praise and show up in this place in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I'm Pastor Jalen. Like always, I got something to say. You can follow me at Anointed Jalen on all social media platforms. You can see it on the screen. But if you can't see it on the screen, look up Anointed A N O I N T E D Jalen J A Y L O N on all social media platforms. You can find me on Facebook, TikTok, all those good places, and Clubhouse Streets, and see what I'm doing. And if you want to listen to my music, you can check out my music, my team reps, Jesus. Um, slip away, renew my praise, wake up, bless. Um, and I have played more. And the song that hit a million streams, y'all spirit flows through me. It's still doing numbers is at 1.36 streams right now. I'm to God, all, all the glory. Cause I would have never thought that one of my songs would be able to reach that many people to be able to hear the passion I have behind that project to let people know that we could be able to dance like David dance and to be able to understand that you could get your praise on in a different way that don't got to be so churchy. So Definitely go check out Spirit Flows Through Me on all streaming platforms. And if you haven't, before I bring anybody up, let's do some housekeeping. Make sure that you share, like, subscribe. If you're watching us on, on the good YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Push that, that uh, subscribe button so you can get notified every time that we are live. Another thing is, if you're anywhere else in this world, Make sure you download the Anointed Radio app, 24 hour gospel all day, every day. You can listen to some great music all day on the plane, in the car, at work, at home, no matter where you are. Because if you didn't know, in 2024, which is next year, cars will no longer be having an antenna. So you could be ahead of the game. Download the Anointed Radio app and you could play Anointed Radio on, on the car, the CarPlay app for apple or android so you already had a game you got your music 24 7 no matter where you drive no matter what city you in you can listen to anointed radio and get your praise on get your worship on and be able to really get that sanctified praise that you need in your car so make sure that you download the anointed radio app and if you haven't checked this out on youtube make sure you follow us on youtube because we're now doing youtube shorts we have a lot of great clips that we're having from Back in the day to present to 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 even some that's going to come back that I'm searching in the archives so that we could be able to show little clips that was really um, inspirational and really motivational to be able to help us in our Christian walk. Amen. Amen. With that, my mouth is tired. Yep. Amen. Download the Anointed Radio app. I'm going to bring up my lovely co-host. We have the lovely Brittany Marley. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna just pause and just be sad for a moment. <laughs> Make sure you tune in next week because we're going to do a great send off for Miss Brittany Marley next week. And and I told you, keep showing her the love, y'all. We still family. Don't matter. And we got Miss Prophetess Tish. She over here doing big things. She got a book that's out, a conference that's out. She's doing all kind of stuff. Definitely check her out. And then we have the funny but talented Las Vegas native, Miss Simi. So real here. <laughs> go, go ahead and uh, let, let everybody know where they can follow you. 
<laughs> what's up everybody you can find me on insta right up here on instagram at i am Brittany marley um you can check out my blog Brittany talks blog and you can check me out on my youtube and as pastor jay said if you guys tuned in last week you guys know that next week is my final episode on the show um yeah that's all i have to say about that amen <laughs> <laughs> I'm next. Sure. Who next? I'm next. Okay. Well, this is your girl, Simi So Real. You can find me on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, this week coming up, if you're in Las Vegas, I will be um, hosting the uh, hosting a anniversary church anniversary uh, Prince of Peace at the Imperial Banquet. In the weekend after, I will be hosting the Bridge the Gap event at the World of Evangelism for the Miss. On a car, God's aka God's poet. Amen. <laughs> and I am Prophet Stitch here. You can find me on. I got okay. You can find me on on Instagram at Properly Got Creations. You can find me on Facebook as well as Tish here. And you can find me in the Clubhouse Streets as Prophetess Tish here in the Fervently Creations room. Also, check my website out, www.fervelycreations.com. But if you want to see me, you want to meet me, you want to fellowship with us and along with a whole bunch of other amazing and uh, phenomenal people, make sure you meet us in Atlanta, Georgia, June 2nd, June 4th for the Prison of War in the Mind Conference. I'm out. Amen. She out. She's she dropped the mic. She was like, yeah. Amen. With that, uh, make sure you guys follow these lovely ladies where they have some great ministries outside of Anointed Radio doing great things. Follow them. Make sure that you get their follows up, support, do all those good things. And we have our guest today. Our guest today is Miss Coach Denise Flippin, a.k.a. Flippin Faith, because she be flipping faith. She be getting people to be like, oh, I'm Muslim. Flip that. I know <laughs> Jesus. I'm just playing. Miss Denise, flipping y'all. Welcome. <laughs> yeah. oh, thank y'all for having me. I'm excited to sit here with you guys. So, so where can they, everybody find you, all your IG, all your website, if they can't see, you know, if you could see it, it's right there by her, by her picture. But if not, where can they find you? All things Flipping Faith. In them Clubhouse Streets, Flipping Faith. Facebook, Flipping Faith. Twitter, Flipping Faith. Uh, Instagram, Flipping Faith. Um, so is the on IG is the flipping underscore faith. Um, the website flipping faith dot services. So yeah, everything, all things flipping faith. I would like to get what order of flipping faith to go the four ninety nine combo, please. <laughs> With extra sauce. <laughs> can I get a flipping faith anointing like this? <laughs> and can you throw in that flipping faith gracefulness? And um, abundance. This time, give me the right abundance, not the bills. The abundance of love and peace. Can I get that <laughs> one? I'm going to bring back the other one I got from last week. <laughs> she needs the, the flipping technology services. And can you add that in? And can I get a discount if I get a bundle? <laughs> a bundle. Get the bundle. Oh, get the, the bundle's get the usually bundle. cheaper. Get, get the <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So with that, um, giving you some quick updates. Let's go ahead and get some quick updates. Las Vegas update news. So if you did not know, our freeways are trash. Yes, that's most of that update because everybody from California is coming here. Welcome to Las Vegas. And we have the Oakland Athletics, a.k.a. now transferring transferring to Las Vegas, becoming the Las Vegas Athletics, where they're now going to be plumb dumb in the middle of Tropicana at where the old ca casino, Tropicana Casino, is residing now. That place will now be taken down for the Oakland Athletics on the Strip, where we'll have more traffic. Back to you guys in the booth. Yeah, well, 
as you all know, we might be looking at an increase in taxes pretty soon with the law. Uh, Oakland teams continuing to come here, people driving like they're crazy. It will force one to pray. If you did not pray in the morning, you will either pray or you will speak in tongues. I uh, hope you don't do the latter on the freeway. So the pressure is up for people all over the world, especially Californians, are finding themselves right here in this great state of Nevada. And if you are thinking about moving here, please don't. We love you from afar. <laughs> Thank Your you. Your ministry so is great where you are now. Um, <laughs> they need you there. They need you there. The rain will, will bless you there. Amen. <laughs> One thing I, I, I definitely want to say, if you did not see our state flower, which is the orange cone, you can see it on every freeway that we have. <laughs> yes. You can see it on every freeway that we have. The orange cone here in Nevada uh, is our state flower. So definitely don't pick it up. Don't run it over. But look at it and understand that you have to merge. But that is Las Vegas news coming here soon. And we definitely will say stay prayered up. Stay classy, Las Vegas. But, Back to you, Pastor Jay. All right. We're going to go ahead and go into the game. We're going to go into the game where uh, it's going to be hosted by Miss Brittany Marley. All right, y'all. Today's game is less of a game and more like 21 questions, except for I will not be asking y'all 21 questions. We'll probably stop around seven. <laughs> okay. Um, I found these on the internet. Once again, these are very Christian, very Christian based, which is cool because this is anointed radio. Hold That's on, Brittany. Yeah. Hold on, Brittany. Yeah, I hear Wait, it too. I hear yeah. some popcorn popping. I'm wondering who the popcorn is. I'm going to guess it. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> Back to you, Miss Brittany. <laughs> okay, Simi doesn't like you're going to be able to participate. We need Simi to participate in this. We need to fix this. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if it was my mic, but go ahead and mute me. No, I will good. lip sync the answers. No, you're good now. <laughs> we got you. Now we can't hear you, Pastor Jay. We just had to reset your audio. It's nothing. We had working technical difficulties in the background. We're back now. Back yeah. to you, Ms. Brittany. Trying to back leave to you out. No. <laughs> this is a team <laughs> effort. Here we go. Okay. First question. Did the Bible live in me today? Mm. Yes. Yes, it did. It was alive and well. It was a tug of war, but it did. This is why we need you for this game. <laughs> I, had to think, I had to think, like, who all did I talk to today? And, like, was it was it good? Did anybody get on my nerves? I'm good. I, I did. Today, I did. Amen. What about you, Flippin' Faith? So, say the question again. I got to understand. Did the Bible live in me today we are, i'm not saying all throughout the day but no i i am i am a, i was the walking bible today i promise you amen 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 come on philippians come on <laughs> it was the the gospel of philippians happening right do, now. Do, do we really read the bible y'all because when we say it was the bible living in us today y'all know it was some it was a whole lot of happening in the bible it, 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 it's any part of your life could be the Bible today. So we were it was fine to the most. But did you hide parts. the word in your heart today? <laughs> did you, did oh, we like live Old Testament, New Testament? I absolutely walked. It. I absolutely walked in flipping faith today. I absolutely did. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm looking for a good one. These are some of these are a little. Eh. Am I honest in all acts or words, or do I exaggerate? I'm I'm gonna have to go with like matter. a like evaluate yourself. Evaluation. I'm honest. I actually bring it down a little bit. Though. I do too. I'll be too honest, and then people be like, "You just so blunt." Or do you exaggerate? Are you just pretty honest with your words? Or do you like over exaggerate, embellish? I cannot be honest with my words. Then I could not be walking in the Bible. I can't do. Well, we passed that question. <laughs> <laughs> if, if we go on, leave the last question where it's at. <laughs> I was very honest. The so people are watching, so we have to be honest with our questions. 
And if I'm honest, I can't do both. What if I'm just honestly um, over the top? Like, that's just, I just honestly exaggerate. But I mean, well, you've been honest right now. So there you go. There we go. Right. Um, I would flip in faith on that. I think it's okay sometimes to exaggerate. It depends on the situation. It's situational, case by yes. case situations. Yes. That's Woo! Awesome. Okay. All right. Do I insist on doing something for which my conscience is uneasy? Paying these bills. Oh, yes, Jesus. Uh, yeah. Hey, come on, Because <laughs> okay. my conscience. Be telling me, man, bro, you know what you could do with that? And then these bills be like, do you want to go outside? And it's hot in Vegas right now. So, yes. Uh, mm, yes. I heard a spiritual song. My mind be telling me no. You was all right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> we was all in the same vein, y'all. We was That's in the, the same truth. vein. <laughs> I was left out of that one. I, I'm just not sure if I could say it, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, thank you, Simi. I got you. Yeah. yeah. Tish in the background talking about, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next one. Um, let's see. Do I grumble or complain constantly? Facts. Facts. Yeah. Big facts. That's me. You do? Yeah, I do. I agree. Even I fuss at myself. Yep. I do. You do. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. I see that. No. <laughs> I'm joking. I don't know. What about you and Tish, Sammy? Tish and Sammy. I don't. I don't. Unless I call flipping and then like, hey, girl, let me tell you. She be like, Shaw, hey. I didn't like, get one of them calls today. I didn't get one of them calls today. <laughs> That's a no. That's a no for me. I don't have time for all that negativity. Not even with myself. Myself mm-hmm. be like, girl, you know what happened? I'm like, shut up. <laughs> I'm trying to have Tell a good day today. <laughs> uh, yes, we're going to three more. Let me see. Okay, here we go. Do I confidentially pass on to another what was told to me in confidence. Can I be trusted? Basically, do you gossip? Are you a gossip? Are you a snitch? No. Snitches get stitches. No. Uh Uh-oh, flipping face. Okay. So, can I just explain this a little bit? So, sometimes I have to have a sit down with a trusted confidant about some things because I like to talk, you know? And then sometimes, sometimes, okay. Sometimes. <laughs> I ain't did it today. I ain't did it today. But sometimes, you be sometimes. Snitching. Don't tell her nothing. <laughs> right. So basically, can you be trusted? Or is that yes, I can't can be trusted. I, I can be trusted. Sometimes. <laughs> Depending on how you feel that day. Got you. <laughs> Got it. Note it don't always be gossiping. I don't be gossiping. Sometimes I'm just like, is it me business. or? I feel, yeah. Yeah. I feel like we all have those. Is it me or was I tripping or was it them? Yeah. But you know what? It's, it's so funny because I say that like for it's like outside of the family, but once it comes to family stuff, I promise you, like in family, it'd be conversations that. All right, so you ain't heard this from me, but grandma said, <laughs> all right, you ain't heard this from me, but uh you know <laughs> I do it family wise, but not outside. But family wise, I have one individual and we'll get on the phone like, so did you hear this such and such? Yeah. Like, yeah, but you ain't heard that from me. <laughs> right. I feel like if we all honest, this drastic being point. a coach, I have to hold a lot of things. And so it has changed drastically. They used to say I couldn't. Nobody, baby. Look. Being a prophet, you need to hold a lot of things. I hold a lot of things. <laughs> I, right, Tish? That's what I'm looking at. So, there is, so it's circumstantial. It's circumstantial. Mm-hmm. If it comes to I was business. looking at you. Are you looking at me for a profit? Call out, hello. I heard, he man, I speak of faith. Yeah. I heard my business was in the street today. <laughs> She was the only one I told at eight oh five this morning by twelve twenty one. The whole strip, the whole downtown area knew my business. Put her on the phone. By the Put end of the day, she was on Anointed Radio talking to folks about. <laughs> <laughs> she was. Uh, 
disclaimer: hey, uh, the views of our of our guests do not reflect. <laughs> <laughs> they are gonna be like, oh, we can't never go on that show. Right. They, 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 they gonna be like, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> all right. This question, I don't know. Maybe y'all can explain it to me, but I'm gonna ask it. Do I pray about the money I spend? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I got a personal yeah, prayer. You know what I say? The money Ooh. I spend, let it come back a thousand fold. You really, you really uh, be doing that? I'm serious. Y'all think I'm playing? I'll be like, what? I I spent I spent some money yesterday. I said, oh God, let this money come back a thousand fold before I hand it over. If anybody know me, I get sweating when I be at the cash register giving money. Like, <laughs> oh, hundred and twenty dollars. Man, let me. You said hundred and twenty dollars. I, I look at, I got to look at my bank account because I've been embarrassed before where it say decline and then the lady in the cash register be like, your card declined, sir. And I'm like, oh, well, you well, I'm going to need you, you to use your discretion it. right now. I'm going to need you to use your discretion. Hit the button, be quiet. Hey, hey, hey self-checkout hey, self got a light. And if you know what that light is, that means that it didn't go through. You need somebody to come help you. This happened to me today, by the way, y'all. It did not shine no light. I was at the register praying when I was swiping my card at Walmart today. Did Lord. somebody come tap you on the shoulder and say, ma'am, can I help you? I did get a tap. Dang. And she was like, do you want to fill out our uh, survey at the end of your... Oh, yeah. And then she stood there for a minute and she did say, do you need some assistance? That did happen. Light, it's real the light, life. The light was on. Uh, I could preach that. Yeah, light was on. Get assistance. Mm. <laughs> Last one. Oh man, I don't mind. Oh, in this current moment, are you disobeying anything that God is asking you to do? I feel like you might be. Business. You said what? I, like I might be. I don't know because my hormones not that well right now. So I don't know. It's a season in life with the hot flashes. I don't know exactly what's going on right now. <laughs> I'm like, so what? Are you in the fire? You don't know. I'm in the. <laughs> I've gone through the fire. Hey. And I've been through the flood. Come on, sing it with me. That's what I've I'm been broken mm -hmm. into in pieces. pieces. Lightning flashes. I'm gonna need y'all to stop for they take down our video down because uh, hey, I remember. Hey. Okay. Well, okay. Okay. Well, that was a very game, uh, not so game. The anointed remix. Yeah. I don't know. I can't. You know what? I would like to think that I'm disciplined and being obedient, but there's situations right now. I don't even. I situation. I'm just trying to make it day by day, moment by moment. Uh -huh. Honest. Step Amen. by step. Step by step. Uh, Aren't we all? My, 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 my. Amen. Amen. And there you have it. That was the game. <laughs> that was deeper than that. Was felt like a therapy session. I felt set up on that one. Brittany <laughs> felt some type of way last week when she was like, Y'all set me up. I saw in the comments. If y'all didn't see the preview, oh, y'all did set me up. And Brittany I went into the comments. And she was like, oh, y'all going to set me up to sing? I got y'all. So this that is, is not, well, don't listen. With, with That's our not really what it said. Today. There's it's that exaggeration that I was asking about that. Because <laughs> <laughs> that is not what happened. Brittany, you, you, Brittany sang just fine. She was she just did. fine. That girl good. Uh -huh. That girl good. That girl can sing. That girl can sing. Oh, I felt yeah. like you know how when you in class and the teacher asks a question and they call on you when you not you. I didn't raise my hand for a reason. I didn't raise my yeah, hand. Yeah, but know they know that you can read. If they call on Johnny, we're gonna be here for two hours talking about the 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 road, uh, the uh across. They, yeah, we can, we can't do that. We know you can what, sing. What happened? I can't. I, I, mission Can I go get my cup? Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to go ahead and go into the interview transition out of that game. Thank you, Brittany, for that wonderful mm. game of self-reflection therapy therapy session. 
quick. That was just kind of check your heart, check your mind. Oh, check your heart, check your mind, <laughs> check the fruit that you bear. Yeah. Amen. So, Miss Denise Flippin, this is the time where we can get a little, little more personal with you and understand where you come from, your purpose, your gift, and all the things in the ministries that you are a part of. And we're introducing you to some and reintroducing you to others, putting the right hand to fellowship. And all those good things. Miss Denise, go ahead and tell everybody, where is your hometown and where do you reside now? Uh, my hometown is Buffalo, New York, or Lackawanna, New York. Where that um, Really small little city outside of Buffalo. Um, and then as a young kid, we moved to Buffalo, which is just right across the bridge. Buffalo, Lackawanna, whatever. But so Buffalo, New York. And I currently reside in... Um, where am I? Gulfport, Mississippi. I travel a lot, so I'll be having to check, like, look at my location. Uh, Gulfport, Mississippi, soon to be transitioning for a little bit to um, in between, guess what? North Carolina, and I'll be coming to Vegas. I just found out I'm going to be coming to Vegas for part of my training. Yeah, so part of my training, I'll be spending three weeks in Vegas, sometime in North Carolina, then back to Vegas for some time, and then. How can I get a text that said you got the job? You know what? Never. Mind. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. She found out on the show. I found out on the show. That, that's how you it. It hasn't been official yet. Ooh. So we. On the air. I'm just listen. Let me tell you. I walk in faith, baby. Flipping flip, flip, got flip, it. Flip, 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 flip. I walk this thing out for real. So. I speak those th those things that are not as if they what? Come on, yeah, I do that. Though they were, <laughs> I know that's right. Uh, I do that for real. And another one. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, what was the very first ministry that you could remember that you were part of? Um, yeah, as a kid, the very first ministry you was ever part of. So, oh my God. So there's two, and I don't know which one came first. My aunt Noor, my great aunt Noor used to have us come to her house um, and we would sit on a porch and she would do Bible studies with us and she would pass out candy and stuff like that when we would get answers right. And then I have a cousin, um, Michelle, who also had Bible studies that she would do that she would do with us so which is where i got my very first bible scripture that i've never forgot and i had to go sit with god once he started re-teaching me and rebranding who he was in my life it was the um john 14 verse 6 to 7 i am the way the truth and the life no man comes into the father except through me it was my very first scripture come on now very first scripture. So, so I have to ask. All right, you ready? You ready for this? You ready for this? Let's go. Who was your biggest mentor? Oh, glory to God. Um, the biggest mentor, I have to say, the Holy Spirit Himself. I just literally the Holy Spirit Himself. Outside of the Holy Spirit Himself, um, I have looked up greatly to Pastor Sarah and Teray Roberts. To Ray and Sarah Roberts, I absolutely love them to my core. Um, but out, that's outside of the Holy Spirit. I literally am one who literally walks in the functioning of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. What is it that you like so much about Sarah? Because I know for me, it's like just her raw authenticity. Like it just like she just bears everything, just lays it out there. Listen, baby. So. And I'm, I'm going to try to keep it together because today has been a very emotional day for me as I have been doing a lot of reflecting on my past. So this is just a little challenging. So when I first discovered God on my own terms outside of religion, I thought that because I had grew up in the church and I had been rejected mm -hmm. so much. Um when God first started dealing with me, my family and the church that my mother is connected to, which is also family, um, they thought I was delusional. My, those were the words that my mother said. I was delusional. They did not believe that I was literally hearing the voice of God because of the things that God was calling me to do. God called me to give up everything. I walked away from my four-bedroom home, 
that I was living in was an apartment that I, a house that I was renting, but four bedrooms. I had two vehicles. I was a nurse. I was making decent money. My grandmother had gave me a house that was fully paid off. I had to walk away from when I say everything and my family consistently said that I wasn't hearing God. But God kept saying to me, nothing that your hands can do is going to produce the life that I have for you. And I believed them. Like I hadn't really went on this journey with God or really knowing or I'd never even seen anybody walk this faith thing out. Never seen it ever. I've, all I've known was religion my entire life. So I've never seen the actual hand of God manifest in anybody's life ever. And so, but for some reason, I believed it when God spoke. And I would look at my hands just like this. I'd be like, he said nothing that my hands could do. And I, and he was like, I had to get rid of everything that my hands created. And so my sister, my sister, Ebony, me and my sister started this journey at the same time. She reached out to me and she said, you have to watch this sermon. She's reminding me of you. And so this was my first encounter with Sarah Jakes. And she did that empty hand sermon. Mm -hmm. And she kept doing like this about, you know, releasing what's in your hand. And it was the story about Samson and, you know, don't get the sticky stuff on your hand, picking up things. And when she was speaking, I literally fell to the floor and I cried because it was like, I felt like she understood me. It was like, I'm not crazy. God is really saying these things to me. I'm not delusional. Like I'm not. And it, woo, me and Sarah been on, listen, me and Sarah been on a journey. Me, Sarah, and Tore, we've been on a journey, baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So outside of your family and them telling you you were delusional, how did you really feel like in the moment, like before you heard Sarah, like what? Because it just sounds scary. Like every time I hear somebody tell a testimony, I'm like, Lord, I love you, but please. <laughs> like, please. I got a friend who should be on YouTube watching right now. And I promise you, she is so scared of the voice of God. Like I, it is banana she is terrifying i think is the most but but god leads her in other ways he still mm -hmm. navigates her and leads her because he knows what she can handle and what she can't so she's still connected he's still leading and guiding her through the path in which he has for her it's just not the way that he speaks and deals with me so god deals with us all differently he knows us intimately and the way that he connects and relates with us is connected to not only who we are but who we're called to connect with and so that's really one of the most important and things a lot of people wouldn't understand my journey and it's because they're not me you know they're not me they didn't have to go through the things that i went through they didn't have to experience the things that i experienced and nor are they called to the people who i'm called to in the manner in which i'm called to them so it's okay so i had to learn one of the big first things i had to learn was to release caring about what people thought about me and it was hard it was it was it was extremely it was extremely hard but my own thoughts, first of all, before you invite somebody else into the things that God is saying to you, you're going to have to get a grip on it yourself. Mm -hmm. Because the things that God say to you does not look like where you currently are positioned. And this is what had me in tears at work today, because people were talking to me about how they see me and just like where I am and where I'm headed. And I can literally see, like, I'm so much closer to the promise. And this is what I was speaking on. I was speaking to the person about, God told me back in 2016 that I would not need a vacation because my life was going to be one. He was like, you will not need a vacation from your life because your life is going to be a vacation. I, in 2018, I started traveling. My life is a vacation. Even the fact that my job has to send me to North Carolina to train for six months. But in, during them six months, I'm going to be in Las Vegas. I have some things. I may be in Florida, wherever they need me to go. And then at the end of the training, I have to travel to different centers in different states to be able to assist them um, until I decide which state I want to reside in. And so that looks like a vacation to me, my life being as such. When I went and met with Tish in Atlanta, I didn't say, oh, I'm going to Atlanta for vacation. I'm like, oh, I got to go get this rental, drive to Atlanta, take care of some business. But guess what that was? That is back in the day, it would have been like, oh, I'm going to have me a little weekend vacation. Go to it. No. I just get up and go. I go to these places. I experience what I'm going to experience there. I meet people. I love on people. Try new foods. I went to the restaurant with Tish. You know, whatever. Went to a radio show. Met those people. It was amazing. My life is that. Mm -hmm. And so the woman, she asked me, she said, when God first said that to you, did you believe it? 
And I said, I don't know why I did, but I did. When I'm in the glory, when he first says it, I believe that I was excited about it. But then when I opened my eyes to my reality, I was living in a house with no water, no lights, no gas. They couldn't find where the busted pipes was at. My life looked nothing like what it looks like today. And so I would get into these places where God just kept holding me on. And I would say to God, me and God went through, baby, we went to war almost every day. And I would say, I feel like you're just dangling this carrot in front of my face and it's leading to nowhere. And every time I want to give up on you, you do just this little thing for me to keep me holding on. I'm over it. I'm done. Do you know how many times I got to that place? But I just kept holding on. And so Ray has said something to me because I was very suicidal. My, my encounter with God was through a suicide attempt. Mm -hmm. That's not rendered my life. And so I was suicidal. People think that once you surrender your life to God, that you operate in this glory. No, it was hell. The suicidal thoughts got worse. I was literally in a fire. It was the most devastating thing I had ever encountered in my life. Down to my family turning their back on me, me having nothing but my kids. Nobody was supported. Everybody thought I was crazy. I had very few people, literally like my sister, who the church, the church that I was a faithful member at, me, my sister, my kids, we served three services, turned their back. They were not supportive. They thought I was crazy. They did not believe in me. It was hell. But Teray would say something that I would have to, I would have to echo a lot of times when I'm laying on the couch and I can't get up. And Teray has said, sometimes all you can do it's just not die. Mm -hmm. And I had many of those days where all I could do is just not die. But baby, listen, <laughs> when I look at my today, when I look at where I sit, where I stand today, and I had the lady who brought me down to Mississippi, I bumped into her. Trish, I don't even know if I called you and told you this. I did. I bumped into the lady who brought me down to Mississippi and dropped the ball. I mean, left me for dead, baby left me i bumped into her and when i said i said hey my heart was healed like i can Tish, can you believe that my heart was healed because Tish had to talk to me because baby when it first happened Tish was like denise and i was like huh? <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> they both work together flipping face denise and Vince. they both work together for the good of whoever needs <laughs> an encounter <laughs> right and so when I encountered her, I wasn't angry. I gave her a hug and I asked her how she was doing. And she had the same story that she's always had since I've known her. Girl, I don't know. My life is just da da da. And then she asked me, How are you? And I started saying how I was doing. She, well, are you still working at the pediatric center? No, I actually work for this other place and I'm up for a big promotion. I wasn't trying to bolster anything. I'm just sharing. Well, what about your daughter? I said, oh, my daughter, she's doing great. No, she's not with that guy no more. She was in Atlanta doing this. And your son. And I was like, ah, da, da. and like all of these things. And I'm like, yo, my life is really amazing. And this is when I came to grips, like the promises that God had made to me. I'm literally walking in it mm -hmm. and I'm not even fully into the promised land but it's already like manifesting I can touch it I can taste it I can smell it I can see it and that was a revelation for me mm -hmm. I like, love it y'all it. but it's it's deep Amen. Oh, it's you, see, before you go to the next question, I gotta say this because the Lord is like not letting me go. Like He's telling me to correct myself. I wasn't saying. I think because you think that I said scared. I wasn't saying that I was scared of the voice of God. I was saying, please don't ask me to <laughs> drop everything and go. I will, but let's not get to that point. Is what I was saying. Ooh. Yeah, I did think that you were saying that you were scared of His His oh, no, voice, no, no, no. how He speaks. No, okay. Yeah. So, so, correct thing. I was trying to be like, no, I can let it go, but no, correct yourself. So you know, you know what God has you correct because you because you walk in that office of prophet, how huh, prophetess. <laughs> you got it, Jay. You got it, Jay. Right. I mean, you can ask. Me <laughs> but what was y'all telling her? You can ask your question. Prophet. <laughs> I'm gonna leave another. 
God is in, she has to be intentional about her words that come out of her mouth because she's a mouthpiece. Ah, uh, translate, translate that to amen. So one thing I would want to ask, um, <laughs> You skipped Simi. Simi was about to ask. Yeah, Simi, Simi, are you ready? Here, just because I didn't have my microphone up. I, I, I was, I was going to ask, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Flipping Faith, tell us about that brand. Tell us about the mission of Flipping Faith. Tell us about how you came about the brand and Flipping Faith. So the name came from, I was a part of a women's group at the church. And there was one woman in the group who always attacked me. I actually, we threw a New Year's party at the church, right? And I actually blew up on her at the party because I actually called her before the party, said, can we talk so we can hash out whatever issues you got with me? And she never responded to me. And then we get to the party and she pulled me to the side when the ball is about to drop and she's talking and she's not even talking the truth. Um, and then I hear 10, 9, 8. So now instead of me bringing in the New Year in a celebration stance, I'm at the side having a conversation with you. So I walk away and I go in the bathroom and I cry. Come back out. She tried to sit next to me and continue the conversation. I said, yo, you really need to like get up out my face before you yeah, get real ugly in here. So just move around, move around. So after time went on, we wound up at another church together and she wanted to meet with me do lunch. And I was like, no, there were other things that she did to me. Like she, she sent some emails to stop me from um, getting a position as a board through uh, one of the huge um, networks in our community health networks in our, um, in our city. She went, sent this email, it blocked that. She did several things. So now we're at this new church together and she wanted to meet me for lunch. And I was like, we can do journey business together. That was the name of the church. We could do journey business together, but personal, we don't do that. She said, but I've been knowing you since before the journey. And I said, yeah, and you've been ugly since before the journey. You, you forgot. So I said, I didn't want nothing to do with her. God said, go meet with her. So I call her back and I go meet with her. And when we sit down and we talk, and I, I bring up everything. I got all my receipts. This is that, that, that. And instead of her trying to deny anything or excuse it, she said, the reality is I've never seen a woman so on fire, a young woman so on fire for God before in my life. And she said, and the truth of the matter, I've always been insecure and I wish I had flipping faith. Flipping is my last name. She said, I wish I had flipping faith. Oh. And I didn't think about it at that time. It wasn't until later that God reminded me of it when I was in Georgia and it became a brand. Flipping faith, it, it takes, I meet people right where they are. I don't care what you're, I don't even, I don't even consider myself a Christian. I don't confine myself to religion, right? To, to the, the boxes of, of religion. I am free. I truly operate in the spirit, the leading of the Holy Spirit. I can sit down with Muslims and have amazing, valuable conversations. I sit down with atheists, spiritualists. I mean, it doesn't matter what the faith base is. I'm able to sit and meet them right where they are and show them God in the midst of it all. And so that's what flipping faith is. I am called to love on those who are deemed unlovable by society for whatever reason. You know, the LGBTQ community. I just had a conversation with my, my manager who's um, a gay guy. We just had this very profound, amazing conversation. I can sit in the midst of anybody and show them God right where they are. And that's what Flipping Faith does. Amazing. So I have to ask, with dealing with a lot of different people and spirits that are attached to people what is a prayer regimen that you say that you do daily to be able to release the things that people pour when you're speaking to people so one of the things is this you know so this my daily my daily maintenance is this being in tune being connected this scripture says to pray without season ceasing. I think that we think that prayer looks like Father God in the mighty name of Jesus. No. Prayer literally looks like having this open gateway of communication with God at all times. Where I walk, I pray about how my daughter here is going to be. Should I walk? To, should I go to work? Should I be at work today or should I? I'm constantly in a space where, God, what is it that you have for me? Me being able to see God, see people the way that God sees them. What When the people come to me, can you pray for me? I got this going on. You don't want me to pray for you. That's not what you want. What you want is the results of my prayer. 
Like as I'm talking to you, I am laying it already at the altar. As you talk it, my 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 spiritual uh, gate is open. I'm communicating with God as you are speaking. What God gives back to me is what you need. That's what you need. So people say, can you come and pray for me? No, actually, I already have a word for you because I'm already in that space. I'm already in that band. However, there are times where things attach itself to me. And my biggest thing, baby, meet me in the water because I'm getting in the shower. I need a bath. I need a shower. I need to cry. I need to punch the water. God, what? I give him my burdens. And I take his yoke, which is much easier. It's much lighter. I've learned to understand other people's emotions and situations are not mine. I have to remain true to who I am, regardless of those are their feelings. Those are their perspectives. The only thing I can do is add to their perspective. That's it. I'm not taking anything. I'm just adding so that they can wrestle. You're not going to wrestle with me. The thing that you need to wrestle with is the word. So I release a word. And I get out the way so that the word can do what it's supposed to do, not me. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about the health ministries that you were part of. So I know that um, in California, we have the California Health Ministry, which is uh, a ministry that it promotes health and it promotes a lot of from, you know, prostate cancer, breast cancer and to mental health and all those different things, diabetes, high blood pressure, and to be able to promote it to the church so that they can be able to be aware if someone's having a stroke compared to having the Holy Spirit and, you know, be able to have the, the difference, the differences in it. Cause people laugh, but it's a very real thing. It's a really real thing where someone could be like, he's slain in spirit. He's having a, a, a cardiac arrest. Uh, we should definitely have a defibrillator here, or you know, this person is having aneurysm. It's the, these are the things that I believe that I. When you said that, I lit up because I don't hear many states or many cities saying I have a health ministry where they have health professionals installed in the church ministry to be able to bring people to awareness. So break down the. Uh, of the about the health ministry that you were part of in Mississippi. Okay. So what happened was I wasn't a part. So there is a healthcare network in my city that is faith-based called Jericho Road. And I was supposed to serve on the board. I have been in the rooms with the CEO. I have had to pray. I was scared. God kept telling me to give him a word. They were strategizing. My sister is a, is a cook. She was there catering. So I was assisting her and she had to leave because she wanted to go to a women's group. She said, could you just Keep it together for me. I said, yeah, I I got you. And they're in there talking about the problems and how they can connect with the community. And I, God is literally downloading the solutions to me. And so God is telling me to speak. And I was like, God, I am, I'm not even the one they hire to be the caterer. I'm like, I literally have no business in this room. How dare I open up my mouth? Like, how dare I? And so I'm sitting there and God keep unctioning me to say it, right? So at the end of the meeting, I don't move. I'm sitting there. So that at the end of the meeting, they get up to pray. And they asked me, do I want to join them in prayer? So I stood up and prayed with them. And when they got done, I said, can I pray? And they said, yes. And so in the form of prayer, I gave them every strategy, everything that God had said to me, downloaded into me. I said it as if I was praying because I was too intimidated to Say, hey, I have an idea. I have a solution. So much so that the CEO boohoo cried. And when I went back, my sister was catering for them again. Everybody kept coming up to me. You're the girl. Do you know we keep getting emails about the things that you have said in our meeting? We get emails. He talks about you. Da, da, da. This was the board I was supposed to serve on that the lady blocked. Mm. However, one of the things that I believe is really important is that when we when it comes to religion, people do not understand. They think that medication is a no. I don't take medication just because I can't stand the pill. That's just not me. And I believe that there's ways to get things done. But for some people, they do need medication. That's them. We don't know how God is going to deal with their health issues. But a lot of times people think that if you have faith in God, then you don't need medication. You don't need God and. You don't need God and a therapist. You don't need God and. But Jesus walked around and he healed in many different ways. Every time he just did not speak us in the word. There was a man that was blind that and Jesus spit, put mud, mixed the mud in it, rubbed it on his eyes and told him to go wash off in the water. That sounds like a treatment to me. That sounds like a treatment to me. There are different ways 
in which God chooses to do different things. You don't know this person may need to go see a doctor. This doctor has been anointed to lay hands on you in the operating room. But because we have this idea that we need to just pray things away, then we can't get what we need. And so it really starts with educating. I currently work, I'm a nurse and I work for CSL Plasma. Why I love, I love CSL Plasma mission. I love, to me, it's a ministry in itself that people are not even aware of. And, you know, you have the religious faiths that believe that you can't accept blood. But, you know, we use the blood plasma for a lot of rare diseases. However, it also pours back into the community because most of the people that come in here, they don't have nothing. They're, they're living in homeless shelters. They're living in hotels and just donate in this plasma in order to survive. A lot of them come in there broken and beat down. You know what my job inside my center is? I encourage the people that come in. You don't know how many people I minister to sitting in my chair. I'd be like, oh, Lord, okay, here we go. And another one. And another one. And, the, and not only the donors, but even the staff. Teaching them to have compassion. You get frustrated and angry when people get mad. That's not your emotion. That's theirs. And they probably have every reason and right to be frustrated. Deal with it. Talk to them. Calm them down. My center manager says that I'm a light in the facility. That's what she said. She said, you are a light. You have brought light here. You have brought peace here. And so just really educating people because they do not believe it's God in. It's God in whatever the Holy Spirit called you to utilize in your journey, in your walk. If it's God in a therapist, then it's God in the therapist. If it's God in some medications, it's God in, in some medication. You know what God told me? He told me I will not die. How am I going to die? I thought that that just mysteriously meant that God was not going to allow me to have diabetes, high blood pressure, and COPD. God said, if you're not going to die like your grandmother, then you can't live like her. Wow. Bam. Wow. That's good. How to Ooh, that's good. How to, how to live. I thought that I'd be able to just navigate. Hey, hey, hey. God got me. No. Yeah, he got me, but it was going to take some renewing of my mind. Yeah. So that mm -hmm. actions could be different. And so it is God in. It is. Very much so. And whatever God chooses to utilize for your purposes in your journey. See, when you said that, that reminds me of you know, we, we all got, uh, when you have benefits, right. They have you do these checkups, you, you do a dental checkup, you do a physical checkup, but we never do a mental checkup. Cause one thing that has been a bad omen in our community, we could all say is that a therapist, when it came down to a, now a therapist being able to speak to somebody because we've been put in this omen that we don't speak how we feel. Yes. Even in the church, we're trained that way. How yes. you feeling? Blessed and highly favored. Blessed no, highly favored. No, you don't. That ain't you, how you feel at all. You you you're you're struggling. You're going through depression. You're you 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 about to lose a marriage. You're about to you know. Don't you speak power. that because words spoken in faith have power. We're not taught to be real. Like this yeah. is how I'm feeling. When God says, "Give me your burden," He says, "Give me the fact that you're depressed." You have to acknowledge that this is what it is. Give me the fact that you have diabetes. You have to call that thing what it is. If we're going to destroy it, we have to be able to identify it. Everything has a name. So we have to be able to identify that thing, and then we tear that thing down. So it's a constant misconception that is planted in our head that causes us to live suffering with diabetes because we're not going to speak that we have diabetes. You already got it. If you speak it, you're going to have it. Well, I have, like, what you, it's, it's already there. Like, what, what you want me to do? I have it, but I am trusting God that he's going to give me. Listen, strategy. On how to be healed. Not that he's just going to miraculously heal. You're not saying that God can't. But the reality is that we put this weight on God because we don't want to take accountability for our own lives. And when you come in relationship with God for real, God is just a reflection of the greatest version of yourself. And then the Holy Spirit leads you on how to become that greatest version of yourself. But instead of us taking accountability for our life, we like to lay that on God up. Uh, God, I ain't got it. He gonna heal me. And then you wonder why you in the casket. Six, well, you ain't wondering nothing. But your family wondering why you in the casket six months later. And it's because nobody was real about what was happening in your life. Mm. Ooh, wee. Mm. My, 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 my. That's a mouthful. Because I sure need to stop eating the ice cream and biscuits. I want you to call me out, Lord. Come, just put. Your, I thought you don't got the mic up. 
The mic is down. <laughs> she had a reflection moment. She said, oh, the oh. ice cream got to. I bought ice cream today. We got Blue Bell in Vegas now. Anyway. We got so Blue Bell. But <laughs> any bell work. <laughs> Chocolate bells are the best to me. <laughs> you said any bell. Any bell. Could. So, okay. So, regrouping. Going back and realigning. Last question I would say is um, this. Where, where do you... Where can everybody find... Where can everybody find you and um, your books, all your stuff? We haven't really didn't get to get into that, but really everybody wants to know where they could find more about you, if they could connect with you and all those good things. First of all, I'm going to be in Atlanta, a a a June 2nd through the 4th, a a a it's going down. Me be at the Renaissance. It's going, it's going down. Hey, right? That's where we're going to be June 2nd through the 4th for the Prisoner of War in the Mind Conference. Listen, baby, I got, I, wait, I intentionally brought, oh, I left it over there. My book, I had it intentionally, but then I relocated myself, so whatever. But my book came, I've been reading some of them chapters, baby. Jay, I started yours today, but then donors started coming and I couldn't get into it. But best believe I'm going to finish that thing tonight. Um... But I'm the Prisoner of War in the Mind Anthology, the conference. Um, I'm on Clubhouse faithfully every Saturday, at the minimum every Saturday, in our Fervently Creation Iron Sharpens Iron Room. Baby, listen, it goes down. Um, most Fridays, I'm in the room. Are we still going to be doing the rooms on Friday, or is that coming to an end? -ish? It's going to come to an end. It's, it's coming. Well, Saturday, y'all can meet How us in the now every Saturday on 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 Clubhouse. Um, it's the fervently creation uh iron sharpens iron room. That is what time? 10, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard. Yeah, nine central um time. Uh I am on Facebook. I am flipping faith. I am on Instagram, flipping underscore faith. And then I have my website, flipping faith dot services, where I am I have a self-coaching program called Love the Effective weapon you can go on there it's not fully put together but you can do the seven day trial which and just tell me how you feel what you're thinking give me some feedback y'all take that that seven day love the ex, uh, effective weapon um seven day trial self-coaching trial and tell me what you're thinking i'm putting together the rest of it it's going to be a banger amen definitely go check her out on all things and i want to say on behalf of anointed radio thank you for coming on and being here, giving us some gems, talking about all the great things in your testimony that I know somebody is going to walk away with. And one thing I want to do, which is unorthodox, unorthodox. Simi, I'm, I'm, I'm going to lean on you. Hopefully, you know, you come from good stock. Could you go ahead and pray for Prophetess Tish? Oh, Prophetess Tish. Yes, yeah. I sure will. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you lifting up our sister standing in the gap with and for our sister, Prophetess Tish. Lord, we just ask that you will continue to order her steps. We ask that you will continue to allow her to decrease, that you may increase in her. Lord, we just say that no weapon formed against her shall prosper. We ask, Lord, that she be a fire, just contagious in the Holy Ghost. Lord, where she go, may your spirit permeate, saturate. Lord, in that place and may people run and want to be saved, want to be elevated in the spirit and anything that's not like you may it die and may be sent back to the pit of hell. May people leave that she encounter. May they leave even in her conference. May they leave free. Uh, may they leave elevated. May they leave uh, feeling the freedom of God. And, and, and may they leave with clarity of what the purpose is and where they're supposed to go in their next season. We ask that you use this mighty vessel, Prophetess Tish. May she get, give you the glory, oh God. And may you even elevate her in you as she bless your name and expands the kingdom right here in the earth, Lord. And we thank you for all things. Lord, have your way in her, through her, and for her. In the mighty name of Jesus. And if anything come against her, we ask that you would send not only your ministering angels, but your warring angels. That she can continue to strategize and be the spiritual warrior and mouthpiece that you have called her to be in this season. In Jesus' mighty name it is so. 
Amen. 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 And with that being said, make sure you share, like, subscribe. Much love, everybody. We're going to next week's going to be lightweight, emotional. So bring your tissues, bring your ice creams and all that good stuff. But uh, make sure to tune in next week and um, follow us. Download the Anointed Radio app. Follow us on LV Anointed Radio on all social media platforms. And if you want to sow a seed, the cash app is dollar sign anointed radio network. We are building our Roku channel. You can be able to see every episode, including some different exclusive shows. That's only to our, our TV network. And you can follow us on there at anointed radio network app where just like Netflix, it's anointed radio. So with that being said, much love stay in Christ. Let the Bible stay in your heart and don't let stress take you out of here. See y'all next week, y'all.